Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 131 of the... <laughs> I just forgot the title of my own podcast. The Sovereign Storytellers Podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. Today we're going to talk about the last thing or the one thing that you need to be focused on manifesting. And it's not money, and it's not health, and it's not the love of your life. And it's not a new car or a new cat. <laughs> Does anyone ever have to manifest for a new cat? I swear to God. You just walk out your back into your backyard, throw out a can of food, and pretty soon you're going to have all the cats you could ever want. Um, oh my God. If I even stop... <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know where to start with this one because... so. All day today, other than doing my regular social media posting routine and things of that sort, I, I really haven't done anything on the surface. And I was asking myself, like, you know, do I need to, like, make myself go do some stuff? And I'm sort of puttering around my room, and um, I, I, uh, yeah, it's it's a way for me to deal with external circumstances at the moment is to, um, you know, hang out in one space. And I got the clear sense of, no, don't need to do anything. Just putter around in here and do your thing and, you know, pet whatever cat happens to be in the room at the moment, which there's only three that I have four cats, but only three of them come and go out of my room. So I was like, all right. <laughs> so just hanging out, doing what we do when we have nothing to do. So I was thinking about this class I have coming up. And it's called uh, Rainbows After Storms. And the message I've been getting is that we really have forgotten how to be happy, how to let ourselves feel happy. And now seems like actually the worst time to think about focusing on being happy. Um, uh, things aren't, you know, I mean, depending on how you look at it, things are not really better uh, than they have been. And in some cases, you could say they're actually worse and continuing to get worse. And they will continue to be, times will continue to be disruptive and turbulent for some time to come. So if you're one of those waiting for this to pass so that you can feel better, um, that has to end. Because this is it. This is what we have. This is the life we're living. When we wait for X, Y, Z to appear so that we can fill in the blank, we're doomed. We'll just be waiting forever. We've, I've talked about that a lot on this podcast because it's just part of the human condition. I mean, I could probably make, um, you know, 50 different episodes about how the if this, then that really gets in our way. If this happens if my partner would only if i could only find a partner if my circumstances were different if i had a new car you know if i were taller if i was a baller <laughs> you know I mean, come on we can't keep waiting So in thinking about this course, which is two hour, it's a two hour workshop, $55. There's still time for you to get in it. Just go to my Facebook page. It's right there on the cover photo. You can't miss it. Facebook.com forward slash Michelle Wolf 11. Um, so I was thinking about that course coming up. Of course, in genuine Michelle Wolf method or lack of method or lack of method, I haven't written any kind of curriculum. <laughs> I generally don't do that till about a mm, couple hours before the workshop. I'll sit and maybe make a few notes. <clears throat> That's not because I'm special. It's because I'm old and I've spent a lot of time working with people 
and I know how to lay out curriculum. So I don't hear me say that in a cocky way of like, Ugh, I'm so special. I don't have to write my classes beforehand. I've just written so many classes, so many, so many curriculum development. Like it's been a, a, a long educational process. So I just have mastered some things that, that make it easy to pop up and do a workshop. So I was thinking about that and, you know, okay, what of all the things I have, what of all the tools I know do I want to pull four of and how do I want them to fit together? You know, just sort of contemplating that, not writing anything down. And then I clearly heard, I'm paraphrasing, of course, if you took all the time and money that you've spent you in the sense of the global you they weren't like yelling at me and spent all your time manifesting happiness making it your one job to manifest joy your entire life would be different If you viewed your job as one job, you have one job, and that is to manifest happiness, joy, whichever word feels best to you, your whole life would be different. Now, the group that I channel laughs at us quite a bit. <laughs> they have this shitty sense of humor where there, people will come to a session and they'll say, uh, oh, in five years, I'm going to do that. Oh, when I have this material collected, then I'll do that. And they just laugh. They just laugh and laugh at them. They're like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Cutie pie. You little honey bun. <laughs> It's, they just laugh like, yeah, okay, you can wait five years. You can put it off and put it off and put it off and put it off. Or you can start doing it tomorrow. <laughs> Your choice as they're laughing away. Um, and they were laughing this morning. Oh, my sweet potato pie. Have you ever, and I don't recommend you do this, and I'm not going to do it either. But have you ever thought about Adding up how much money and time you've spent on oh, law of attraction materials, the secret, the Abrahams. I love Abraham Hicks. Esther Hicks is, I think, the best projector on the planet. So I'm not criticizing what she does because I listen to little snippets of her recordings damn near every day to stay focused. <clears throat> but it's funny, isn't it, that we hear this all the time. Uh, focus on feeling good. And we think, oh, that's a fabulous idea. What a marvelous idea, darling. And then we don't do it. Or we do it just for the length of time that we listen to that recording. And then we're off buying another book on manifesting wealth, how to manif how to m m create something out of nothing, <laughs> you know, whatever. I could go on and on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This endless quest for happiness, this endless quest for the thing, the thing du jour that we think is going to make it feel better that we think is gonna if I can just do this one thing if I can just have this one thing if I can just yada yada blah blah woof woof I'll be happy and we know intellectually we've heard this a thousand billion times we have ancient texts that have it written again and again and again that the source of everything's in our heart. Listen to last times. I was going to say last week episodes, but I know it's been longer than a week. <laughs> um, episode number 130. 
We know this. We know it. We know it. We know it. And so what this class has come about, and it doesn't matter if you ever take it or not. I'm not, not doing a sales pitch. But the reason it came about is a message, a repetitive message that we are moving through turbulent times and things are falling and will fall apart. Like we're living the tower card in the tarot, right? Everything is just collapsing and the world is on fire, <laughs> literally in some places. Um, and we can also have joy. And our ability to be in the storm and have joy is not, oh, what a lovely concept. It's a survival tool and we need it. It's not, oh, I think I'll tra-la-la through the fields of dandelions and daisies and, you know, live with my head in the clouds and not ever face reality and then everything will be fine. And no, it's like if you want to get through the next few years, if you want to come out on the other side better than when all this shit started falling apart, then your one focus every day needs to be face the reality that is, name it, describe it, give yourself a minute to complain about it, and then step in to joy. So we are not love and lighting ourselves into oblivion. We are not going to give in to the temptations to turn the volume down with uh, sugar and addictions and whatever else. I mean, you can do that. Obviously, you have free will, but you will not come out the other side intact and thriving the way you can if you make manifesting one thing, your one focus. Let me name my current reality. I don't like my external circumstances. I'm not happy with my living situation. Um, I This money thing could be better. Uh, I want to travel and I'm not able to. And list off all the shit that you're not happy about. I'm coming to you from the bathroom studio and I'm like, Damn, somebody needs to get in here and bleach this grout <laughs> on the tile. I'm not happy about that. And then you take a deep breath and you say, okay, show me where one place in my body is holding joy. Not outside. Don't look outside. A lot of things we'll say, and this is just an interim step. This is not a criticism because it does work, but it's an interim step. And we're being asked to go a step beyond. So, the interim step is to look outside and find yourself something that does make you happy. Pet your cat, play with your dog, take your kids. I was going to say take your kids for a walk, but that I think you're supposed to take your pets for a walk. I guess you could take your kids for a walk. Go take your kids and do something. Go to the park. Do something action-based and outside of you to get into the state of happiness. That's fine. It works. It's it's and it's totally fine. The step beyond that, and Esther Hicks does talk about this. Like when your happiness is based on external circumstances, you're less fucked, but you're still a little fucked because you're still putting your power outside of you. Your power for accessing happiness is inside of you, right here, on uh, what's the date? May twenty second. 12.31 Eastern Daylight Time. It's here right now. It's right here. You don't have to go buy a book. You don't have to listen to a podcast. You don't have to listen to anyone or anything or do anything or go anywhere or even open your eyes. Happiness is right here. It's never, ever, ever, ever based outside because outside is constantly changing. So eventually I'll get in here and bleach this 
pile grout. But it's not going to stay that. It's not going to stay all pretty. I think the tile, uh, it's meant to be a bright white. Right now it's not. <laughs> but it won't stay all pristine after I clean it. Nothing that you do outside of you will stay that way. It's always, always changing. And we have to... We'll do best if we... We'll say it that way. We will do best if we... Take these intellectual concepts that we all like chattering about and begin to live them. Live them. Which requires commitment. Which requires devotion to your own, to developing your own pathways to happiness. Regardless of what is falling down around you. Regardless of if uh, people love you back. Regardless of if you're getting what you want. We talk about it. We read about it. We buy courses about it that get, gather dust because we don't generally do them. It's time to begin living it, breathing it, doing it. Actually, really holding yourself accountable. That when you feel the impulse to run, you feel it and you don't act on it. It's time to grow up. It's time to stop pretending that you're just going to magically get what you want. It's just going to magically appear. It's just going to fall in your lap if you just sit around and be happy. And that's not true. Surely we know that by now. Because we're saying one thing and doing another. That's split energy. And it's self-deception. And it's destructive as fuck. It's a lie to tell yourself that you're doing things that you're not. And that is very damaging on your internal system's integrity. Integrity meaning that <clears throat> being whole and in one piece Telling ourselves lies is shredding our system's integrity. It, it makes holes in our energy, so to speak. So we're, we're, our system is not cohesive and solid. This is letting go of the idea that if I just be happy, then... The magic will happen and the blah, blah, blah. That if I make myself stay in a high vibe. Oh, I'm so high vibe. I'm a high vibration being. Look at me all high vibe. Come on. And I'm not criticizing. Yes, this is high vibe and also it's not. It has no element of denial in it. It has no, um, it's not opening the door for more denial and shadow creation. It's actually the opposite. It's naming the what is. And then moving into what can be inside. The purpose of seeking joy and, and managing to build and sustain and utilize the pathways to joy internally is a survival tool. It's not so that you can create a new car. It's not so that you can get a different living situation. It's not so that you can find love. Well, first of all, you don't find love. It finds you because it's who you are. Oh my God, we're so twisted up about that. 
How do I find happiness? Choose it. Do it. Live it. It's inside of you right this very minute. And I promise you, the thing that you are begging and searching for, if it was plopped in your lap right now, you wouldn't know what to do with it. You would freak the fuck out and get rid of it immediately. Everyone's like, bring me a million dollars. I totally could take that. I totally could take a million dollars. No, you could not. Your nervous system would not be able to handle it. You wouldn't even know what to do with it. And what they're saying now is these storms will pass and the joy that we have access to is amplifying. <laughs> I know that sounds nutso, but as things are falling apart, it's making space for more joy and our bodies at the current state we're in can't handle it. You can't handle the joy. <laughs> You can't handle the truth. It's true, right? It's true that we can't handle the truth. <laughs> it's true <laughs> that the joy is right here, right now, and we are not accessing it. And we need to access it. And we need to be training our nervous system to handle higher, faster frequencies of energy. That's slipping into the high vibe board, right? But it, that part is true. So it's not that anything being said out there is wrong or I'm not bashing anybody. We're all doing what we can. But what's coming forward is that this isn't just a, oh, I don't even, I don't think I can find the right words for it. It goes beyond, it's nice to feel happy. It goes into the world's energy is increasing faster, faster, stronger, stronger, and our bodies have to come up to speed. And if they don't, they will begin to suffer physically and they will transition faster than is necessary. Yet we're training in joy. Like, it's so weird to say, you better get serious about your happiness. Because when we think getting serious, it definitely doesn't feel like happiness. But what they keep shouting, this is coming. The energy is increasing. We feel it. That's what's tearing everything up. Because we have to make more room for more joy. More joy and terror and uh, capitalism and, and, and clamping down, hating women. Trying to trap them punish them for being female, that bu bucket of slop energy can't exist with joy. As more joy floods into the planet, it tears the things up that don't match it, okay? This part is law of attraction. These two systems can't exist alongside each other. This is why people are like, more division. Why is there more division? That everything is splitting apart. It has to. It has to split apart. Because these two systems don't work together. One is flooding out the other one. Love always, always wins. And when this power of love starts flowing through, it is a tsunami that will take out everything that's not a match to it. Love always brings up that which is unlike itself. And that's a quote from someone whose name I can't remember, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, Jim Plosky. Is it Gerald Jim Plosky? Love always brings up everything unlike itself. A lot of people say that. I mean, it's one of those eternal ancient truths that we keep telling ourselves. We keep leaving ourselves these breadcrumbs. So what have people been doing for a very long time? Flooding the planet with light amplifying love, doing our best to find the best. And the bad news is that means everything unlike itself will come up and be swept away. And that's where we're at now. And the frequency of love and joy that's coming through, our bodies are not adapted to. We don't know it. It's not familiar. 
And we have to train in it now because it's not here full force, but it will be. It will be. You train in happiness and joy. You train your body to open up and develop the pathways and the tolerance of higher, faster frequencies of ecstatic energy and amazing love. The love so profound that you don't give a fuck if you ever get anything material that you've been asking for. It can't match the love you can get from another person because people are conditional beings. We're not unconditional. We can't love unconditionally. We like to tell ourselves we can, but we can't. We're in a physical body and it's not made like that. It doesn't work that way. This love that's inside, that you open the door inside that you begin to access and you feel how horrible that feels in your current physical body, that's the love you're actually looking for. And it's not contained in another person or situation. It's not there. It's not out there. There's no book you can buy that will help you find it. That's the trick. That's the cosmic joke that we are looking at. <laughs> that what we're looking for is right in our own hands. And we're looking, 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 our eyes out, 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 out. Yearning, desperately seeking. While we're holding the thing we're looking for. Oh my God, no wonder they laugh at us, right? And it's an affectionate laughing. It's not a, <laughs> oh, you little dumbass kind of laughing. It's, 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 it's part of the human experience, okay? It's all normal. It's all fine. Everything's okay. And we have to start training now. We have to get comfortable now. We have to face the pain of the reality of what is and name it and let those sensations flow through the body. And then immediately on the heels of that, the joy will start to arise naturally. It's not, it's not a one, two, three technique. And also it kind of is name your reality, sit there and feel it. Or walk if you can't sit still, whatever. Dance, do the shaking, whatever you need to do to move the energy through your body. Because as this happiness hits your nervous system, it you won't be able to sit still. You will have to get up, and you should. Get up and dance in the silence. Walk, move, stand there and shake. Some of you will find yourself swaying back and forth. Some of you will find your body's uh, moving into spiral, like just sitting and spiraling or standing and spiraling. The ancient spiral of life that we have also left ourselves so many images of. You help your body get familiar with what is currently unfamiliar and therefore will be rejected. Mind and body are designed to survive. Survival equals sameness. Anything different equals danger and will be rejected. Be get aware of that. And I know that many of you are aware of it, but you've got to live it. You, The walking, your talk is critical. The self-deception self and slipping off into magical thinking has to end. It has to end if you want to thrive, if you want to survive, if you want your body to be healthy and uh, functional for as long as it possibly can. These things must be done. Oh, how horrible. You have to figure out how to be happy. Uh, that's the worst. <laughs> Oh, no. Now I have to go be happy. <laughs> We're such a mess, right? We're a beautiful mess. 
our messy, magnificent life, to quote Janine Roth. So how do you do that, right? Now we get to that part where, now we're past the part where I rant and yell at you. And then how do, so how do we do it? Choose it. Commit to it. Practice it. Don't run away from the discomfort. And watch what happens. As incrementally you grow the capacity for happiness. Stop trying to manifest money. Stop trying to manifest a partner. I've been doing all this work and I still don't have the money. I've been doing all this stuff and I still don't have the partner. I'm ready for a partner, but he's not here. I'm ready for the money, but it's not here. I hear this stuff all the time and I say it too. I'm not, I'm not separate from this in any way. We all do it and we all have to Stop it. Just stop it. (laughs) Stop it. Stop it. And start choosing. How do I find happiness is a timeless, ageless question that everybody asks. And here's how. Choose it. It's that simple. I choose to be happy. If you say that self you to yourself. A gazillion times a day, every day, until the energy starts rising in your body and it's so uncomfortable that you want to go hit the bag of Doritos or you want to watch Ozark for the fifth time or The Expanse. I don't know what your repeat bingeables are, but (laughs) those are two of mine. Or don't. And you're suffering the consequences. And you're suffering anyway. This is what's so weird about us, right? We're suffering and we won't do things because, oh, it's ouchy. It's, it's owie. I don't want to. It's ouchy. But you're, you're already living a daily 24-7 ouchy. <laughs> right? Oh, my God. Don't you just have to laugh when you see it? Like, oh, God. All this time, I've been looking for the thing that I is in my hand at this moment. And all I have to do is choose it. Sit with the discomfort. And repeat. Five minutes of commitment is better than an hour of meditation once a week. A five minute moment A couple times a day where you say, I choose to be happy. I choose to create happiness. I choose to manifest happiness. Not I choose to manifest a $10,000 a month. I choose to manage. I choose to uh, manifest as much joy as my physical body can fucking tolerate. And by doing so, I raise my ability to tolerate more and to tolerate more and to tolerate more. And pretty soon, you'll be a match to the amplification that's happening. I don't surf because there's fish in the water, and I'm not okay with that. (laughs) But I have watched a lot of surfers while sitting on the beach in California. So it's kind of like that, right? You find the stream, and you balance on it, and you fall, and you balance again, and you try again. And you fall. Surfers fall a lot. A lot. The last time I was in California, I watched a surfing class. And those people definitely spent more time in the water than on their board. But when you keep going and you keep going and you keep going, you feel the balancing and shifting that happens. The only thing I have to compare this to is uh, roller skating. <laughs> Does anyone do that anymore? And um, 
cross country skiing because cross country skiing has those little skinny skis and there's this balancing thing you do that's the same as that you do when you're roller skating you're doing these subtle little movements with your ankles and knees and hips and arms when you're cross country skiing uh, and I'm talking uh, I should say back country cross country skiing not on a groomed trail where you're just la 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 plodding along nope you have to get over go down hills and get over trees and do all these things that require you to be flexible and adaptable so it's similar to that kind of feeling if you've ever done any of those sports I've never downhill skied but I'm assuming it's the same of this these balancing these tiny little micro movements that you have to keep doing and doing and doing to stay up on your skis or your skates or your surfboard. It, it's like that. Uh, let's see, what's another example? Another example would be learning to drive. When you learn to drive, you tend to overcorrect the steering wheel. Like you turn it too far to the left, too far to the right, and you're all over the damn place. And eventually you learn that it's just a little micro movement of the wheel. You're just constantly making these tiny little movements with the steering wheel. That's it. And you're staying in your lane and you're not wandering around. You're maintaining a pretty steady course, but the, you're still making these little micro movements the whole time you're driving. But when we start out, they're really big and sloppy, right? So it's okay if you commit to... to not buying another manifesting course and working with what you have right now and just making your one job to manifest more joy, more happiness. That's your one job. You want to manifest something? That's it. And you can do it for free and you can do it right now. The simplest way is to... Remember that it's a constant balancing act. So it's not like bleaching the tile grout. You know, I'm not going to get this tile grout perfect and it, it's going to stay that way. It's not. So you're going to find and locate happiness and it's going to fill your body. But it's not going to stay there. It's not like flipping on a light switch. Life still is like, damn it, I wish this wasn't happening. <laughs> Shit, I wish this was different. So I name the reality and then I go, okay, what's one spot in my body that contains joy? Let me find it. Let me amplify it to the point that I get uncomfortable and then I'll breathe and then I won't run away and I'll do that as long as I can do it and then I'll go do something else. So the quickest way to activate joy is just remember a joyful memory. Remember a time in your life that you felt it was like one of those moments where you're like, I could die right now and everything would be fine. I would be okay with, with, if I died in this moment, this moment is so perfect. I could just die. <laughs> Think of a time when it was just so good. You tried to imprint it on your memory. Like, Oh, let me take a mental snapshot. This is so awesome. Your body doesn't know the difference between past, present, future. Whatever you think about is churning up the chemicals. Mm, an extra reason to start getting really grown up responsible for what you're allowing to happen in your head. You're allowing it. And only you can stop allowing it. It's really up to you to get this happiness happiness pathway opened and begin practicing sustaining it and returning to it not sustaining it forever return sustaining it and then returning to it and sustaining a little longer and returning to it but you're never going to sustain it full time because we're not meant to only feel one thing forever you're never going to just be happy every day but you can have this underlying it's the both and. and I'm not even going to try to find words for it. I'm pretty sure that you understand what I'm saying, where you can see what's happening and you can feel the discomfort of it. And you can also be aware that there's this pit of peace 
that's available to you at all at the same time. Okay, so you think of a happy memory. You fill your system with that energy until you notice you want to run away from it. For some of you, that will be approximately 22.5 seconds that you're going to, and then you want to get up and run away from it. For some, you'll be able to hold it longer, but try to hold it long enough that you feel how your body starts to get antsy about it. It, you're, it starts to feel itchy and uncomfortable. And then just recognize that your body is saying, hold up, honey bunny. This happiness is unfamiliar because we've been feeling like shit for decades. So anything different is dangerous. So we're going to shut this down right now. Just shut it down. Cut. Everybody go take a break. <laughs> we're not doing this thing. Okay, because your body doesn't know happiness, good. <laughs> it doesn't know that. Because it's just energy. It doesn't have a label on it. Sad energy moves at a different rate than happiness energy. Any unfamiliar energy equals danger. Let me just put that on repeat. It's not that your body doesn't want to be happy. Your body doesn't want to be different. And these levels of happiness are different. That's all it is. It's not any more complicated than that. And if there's trauma that you need to deal with and get some help with, you'll know. You don't have to go looking for it. Start flooding your system with happiness and your system will go through the same thing that the whole planet is going through as love rises up like a tsunami and sweeps away everything unlike itself. And then that is often misinterpreted as love equals happiness all the time. And it does not. Love equals allowing all the time. Love lets you feel however you feel. Love doesn't try to cheer you up when you're having a down day. Love says, oh, looks like you're having a down day. Let's talk about it. Oh, let's feel it and explore it. And as you feel and explore it, guess what? You return back to happiness automatically. It, easy, right? S simple. Simple. We're the only ones complicating it. So grab the memory, amplify the joy. Your body's going to say, oh, hell no. And try to make you get up. It's not sabotaging you. It's trying to stay safe. If I could ban one phrase from the world, it would be self-sabotage. What a bunch of bullshit. Trying to stay safe. Recognize your body's trying to stay safe and say, hey, body, it's all right. This is just different. We're just practicing. We're just playing. We're just doing something different. So let's hang out here for a little bit. We'll stand up and dance. We'll stand up and sway, spin in a circle, shake our body, whatever you need to do. Just stand up, shake a tail feather. It'll be fine. And your body's like, okay, all right, I guess we can stretch into this. All right, it's a little uncomfortable, but we're moving and shaking. It's, we're fine. Nothing. There's no tiger in the room. Nothing's looking at us like we're a T-bone steak. It's all right. And do it every day. It's that simple. You can come to the workshop and we can go through some processes with that. You have until May 26th to sign up. But it's just that simple. We'll be doing a little bit more complex stuff, but it really is just that simple. Next time you ask, find yourself asking, how do I be happy? Remind yourself, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. <laughs> Who sings that song? This is how we do it. Shit, it was really popular in the 90s. I can't remember. Okay. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. One job, manifest happiness. No more books about manifesting anything else except your own happiness. All right. Sending y'all so much love. Uh, I'll talk to you next time. And in the meantime, of course, think less, feel more. See you later.